Then one of them that I think could potentially be a candidate for Notre Dame is the head coach of Toledo, Jason Candle. That's the next guy that I want to talk about, Ryan. And, and he's a former offensive coordinator. He, I believe, was Matt Campbell's offensive coordinator at Toledo. And then he got the head coaching job there. He calls plays for Toledo. And if I remember correctly, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong. Yep. I believe he was also someone that Miami interviewed for the offensive coordinator job last year. And I think he turned it down, if, I, if, I, if I'm correct on that. He turned it down and decided to stay at Toledo. So he is at least open to the idea of potentially going somewhere, a bigger school to become a coordinator, which let's be honest, then would set him up for a head coaching opportunity at a bigger school. Cause you're not going to hire the Toledo head coach at Michigan or Notre Dame or Alabama. You're just not going to do it. You know, unless he has insane success, PJ Fleck has an undefeated season, goes to cotton bowl and he gets hired where Minnesota, right? You go 14 and 0 at Notre Dame and make it the cotton bowl. You're getting whatever job you want, NFL college, whatever. Right. So Jason Candle is an intriguing option, right? And here's something that you and I were talking about beforehand that I'd like for you to, to dive into. He's run very different offenses in his time at Toledo that was geared around what his personnel was good at. And when you explain that to me, because you know you're a little bit more familiar with the that part of his offense than I am, explain that, Ryan, and why that why that matters, especially to a place like Toledo, but even why it would, would be good for a place like Notre Dame. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that when you talk about great offensive coordinators and got and great coaches in general, you always assimilate to the talent you have, right? Like that is such a big concept of being a great coach. And I mean, when you think back to like when he was with like Logan Woodside or like somebody in that more mold, they are more passing options than what they currently have in Daquan Finn, who was a little bit more of a runner comparative to what he's typically had. So when you look at what he was able to do, you know, kind of in his earlier years at Toledo and then early on as a head coach there as well, because he's always been the play caller for Toledo. Like he's always been the main play caller. And you saw some RPOs out of him. You saw a little more pro style system. You saw, you know, some spread elements. But for the most part, he's he really offers a lot of different looks. And that's what I really like. I mean, there was some 12 personnel thrown in. There were some 11. There were some spread uh, concepts early on in his career. And then he gets into Quan Finn over the last two years, who you know has developed into his very good starting quarterback now at, at Toledo. He is a much more athletic spread quarterback. That's what he is. So you're seeing them almost exclusively in the gun now. You're seeing them with a lot more 10 personnel, some 11 personnel still, and really spreading the football out. They don't, I, I haven't seen personally over the couple of games that I've watched this year a ton of. RPO action, basically what he's doing, but you see a lot more read action, right? Like a lot more pull, read option, ability for him to get on the edge, that type of stuff. So, I mean, if you're asking for me, like, do I think that he can get the most out of the players that he has? The answer is yes, because he has shown me, despite the style of quarterback and the style of players that he has had, because they also had that Bryant uh, Roback, uh, Kobach kid at, at running back over the last couple of years, not this year though, and they were much more of a inside zone, but also some power concepts last year. This year, they didn't have that type of running back anymore, so they really need to put more on to Quan Finn's plate as far as being the main rusher in the offense, being a much more heavily used player. So, I mean, I love that fact, man. Whether you're working with Sam Hartman in 2023 or hopefully Tyler Buckner in 2024, yeah. I have confidence that Jason Candle can you know, fit those guys into what his style is because I have seen him run multiple offenses, multiple wrinkles of those offenses, multiple philosophies within those offenses as well. So I think he's a very he has a lot of variety to what he does. I think he has a very good mind for the game because that's the one thing we don't talk about enough is if for an offensive coordinator or coordinator or coach in general to do those types of things, you have to be very smart, right? Because you have to understand what you can do, what you can't do, and what you can't push too far. So I really like Jason Candle, man. Underrated guy as far as looking at this job, in my opinion. But I think he's a really smart offensive coach who I wouldn't be surprised if he's got a big-time offensive coordinator job in the future, if it's at Notre yeah. Dame or not, in my opinion. Yeah. Let's look at a couple things about him, Ryan, because I think you make some good points. The offense that they ran with a couple other running backs looked a lot different than the one they had this year, which is kind of what you look at. But he took over as the OC uh, in 2012. He was the offensive yeah. coordinator in 12 and 13, then became the assistant head coach in 14 and 15, and then the head coach in 16, and he's always called plays. They had David Fluellen in 2012 rush for 1,498 yards. 
the next in 13 touchdowns the next year Ed Fluellen went for 1121 in 10 touchdowns 6.7 per carry the reason Fluellen went down in yards a little bit is because they had a freshman running back that year that ran for 866 yards 6.3 per carry I don't know if you ever heard of this guy. I'm going to run this name, but I'm not sure if you've ever heard of him. Kid named Kareem Hunt. You ever Decent heard of him? Player, man. Yeah. Decent player. The next yeah. year as a sophomore, Kareem Hunt goes for 600, 1,631 yards and 16 touchdowns. Their number two back, 7.96 per carry. Their number two back went for 732 yards, and the number three back went for 460. Their lowest yards per carry guy of the top three backs was 5.8. And those three running backs rushed for 28 touchdowns. The running backs, just those three. The next year, Kareem Hunt goes for 973, 5.5 per carry, 12 touchdowns. If you remember, only played nine games that year. He's banged up. Their number two yep. back, Terry Swanson, had 923 yards in 6.5. So their two tailbacks combined rush for almost 1,900 yards a game. The next year, Kareem Hunt is healthy again. He has 1,473, five yards. Terry Swanson takes over in 2017. He goes for 1,363 and 14 touchdowns. Number two back, 702 yards. The number three tailback, 629 yards. Those tailbacks, again, combined for 20 touchdowns. Uh, the next year, Bryant Kobach is their leading rusher as a true freshman. He goes for 917, but their next two running backs both went over 500 yards. 2019, Kobach goes for 1187 and 12 touchdowns. Uh, 2021, Kobach went for 1,400 yards and 15 touchdowns. In between there, he only rushed for, only rushed for 522 yards and four touchdowns in 2020, but they only played six games because the MAC had a very short season. Yeah. He was on pace for over a thousand yards again. So Brian Kobach would have been a thousand yard rusher each of his last three years. To Ryan's point, they didn't have that kind of tailback this year. They only they didn't have the same depth. So they took and they had a quarterback that can run. So they took more advantage of Daquan Finn, who uh, rushed for over six hundred yards and nine touchdowns. So to your and, point, and Ryan, you'll remember to, to not to cut you off, mm -hmm. but he's Go also a player that Notre Dame saw last year, right? Brian Kobach had a long run against them. Daquan Finn had that touchdown, the go-ahead touchdown where Notre Dame had to march back. So you've also seen a little bit of his offense, right? And to your point, he rushed for – Kobach rushed for 114 yards in that game. Yes. Yep. So And they scored 29 points on Notre Dame. Uh, 20, 23 points offensively or 22 points offensively because they had the pick six. Sure. But to your point, I mean, they, they, did, they did move the ball decently on Notre Dame last year. Remember they had that uh, – they had a big play early that set up a touchdown. They ran a wheel route had a really nice kind of downfield pick wheel route concept that that uh, KJ Wallace tried to go under it instead of over it, which which broke it open. Uh, Kobach had a 60-something yard run in that game. And then, uh, like you said, Daquan Finn uh, had that read zone pull where he got outside and and, and uh, scored that touchdown to put him ahead. Their name it was a 29-24, put him ahead 29-24, and then their name obviously went down and, and uh, scored. So yep. it, it's certainly a guy to consider. And – I don't think the head coaching experience is going to hurt his resume when looking at Marcus Freeman because Marcus Freeman's been very open. I, I want an offensive coordinator that can come in and take charge. And that's why a lot of the guys that we looked at, other than Joe Brady, a lot of the guys we looked at that we think are going to be top candidates are all older coaches, veteran coaches that have experience. And I think that's a, a very important thing, in my opinion, uh, for Notre Dame to kind of come in and and consider – you know, yes. when you talk about wanting to get a guy that, that really knows how to take charge of that room, I'm not saying that Tom Reese didn't, I'm not trying to get into that. I'm just saying that's what he's looking for in this hire. And, yep. and uh, Jason Candle not only knows how to control an offensive room, but he's been a head football coach. And I think that certainly helps. And he's an Ohio guy, you know, so he, you know, he's coached in Ohio. I mean, he, he's only ever coached in Ohio. He played at Mount Union, coached at Mount Union for seven or eight years under the greatest. I mean, if we're going to be real about like greatest coach ever, regardless of level, it's Larry Karras. It, I mean, no one's won championships like Larry Karras, and he comes from that tree. And, yep. you know, we're, we're seeing some coaches from that tree have a little bit of success right now. I don't know. Nick Sirianni also played at Mount Union, you know, and coached at Mount Union. He started, got his coaching career at Mount Union under Larry Karras. So, you know, there's a nice track record. He hired Lins, uh, very, Lins, uh, Vince Karras, Larry Karras' son, to be his defensive coordinator. Uh, and I thought he he's done some nice things there as well uh, with that group. So um, Jason Campbell is a guy that I that I that I would would not be surprised if he gets at least some some consideration for this position. Yeah, and, and he's a really interesting guy in my opinion as well because I mean he's done a tremendous job at Toledo. But one thing I'll say from the recruiting side of things because I I have some I have a buddy that is actually you know close in that program right. 
And we know the difficulties that you can have recruiting at Toledo, obviously, right? For instance, right? Like you're not going to get the best players in Ohio, obviously. They, although it's never going to be how Notre Dame operates as much, they have had to make a really swift adjustment over the last year or so to really going after portal kids. Like, so I, I just want to kind of put that element out there because this was something to my, to my knowledge that was Jason candles kind of like push real quick. Right. It's like, we can't be left in the dust. We need to be proactive with understanding the landscape. So I also think that he has a little bit of that to him where it's like, not only do I think he's a good play caller and a good offensive coach, I also think he understands that the landscape changes pretty quick. So you kind of have to be very kind of on the forefront and have a little bit of, of proactiveness in trying to make some of those decisions.